Hi everyone, uh, welcome back and uh, welcome to uh, one of our farm apiaries where uh, our colonies have been foraging on oilseed rape and we're actually at the point now where the oilseed rape has finally gone over. Those bright yellow fields, those golden fields have now turned to a, a green colour as the flowers fade and the pods, those oilseed pods start to form and really uh, it's time to have a look and assess uh, where we're at with these colonies. Uh, we're on a journey this year, we're <laughs> on a blustery journey today, but we're on a journey uh, this year to build up the number of colonies that we've got and I hope that you'll continue to join us on that journey. Uh, we started the year with around 80 or 90 colonies uh, we're in the process of splitting colonies, dividing colonies, and things are going quite well for us actually. We're up to about 140 colonies or thereabouts. And in this apiary particularly, we've got a mix. We have production colonies where we've got some colonies that have produced two or three supers of honey from the oilseed rape, and particularly the hawthorn this spring. It's been um, very good for the bees, lots of pollen, lots of nectar. And we've actually started splitting or preparing these colonies to be split. And if you'd like to see the process that we use for splitting these colonies, then do join us on my Patreon page. The details are in the description beneath the video. But on our Patreon site, we've got in excess of 500 videos. We also have the podcast for you. And uh, don't forget we've got our Facebook group called Stuart's Beekeeping Basics so you can go there and uh, join in the discussion about your beekeeping season. Uh, so we've got colonies here that are set up on double brood. Uh, those colonies are going to be split and we're going to introduce some queens into those and we're actually going to be setting up our queen rearing process later this morning as well. Uh, we'll record that video for our Patreon subscribers so if you'd like to have a look at our queen rearing process then do have a look at that. But as with most living things uh, you get variation and uh, you get problems that crop up and in fact today what I wanted to share with you was a colony that's not done particularly well. We've got a, uh, a hive in front of me that has very heavy varroa damage and it's held the colony back. You can see in front of me that we've got two colonies to my right that are now on double brood with a super so we've kind of sacrificed the spring crop a little bit in order to put them onto a double brood and those colonies will be split and have a queen introduced to the queenless part of that split. But the colony directly in front of me nearest the camera is on a single brood with a single super and really the bees have done nothing in the super all spring and we discovered in one of our last inspections that they had this very heavy varroa infestation and so we need to do something now we could go down the chemical treatment route and we could treat them with a whole range of different treatments uh, but some people don't want to do that some people want to try and move away from chemical treatments and so what we're going to demonstrate today is something called a shook swarm there are one or two little uh, rules if you like and you need to use a queen excluder to stop them absconding but we'll show you that as we go through it but basically you transfer all of the bees from these heavily infected combs and put them onto foundation they then have all of that varroa that would be trapped in those cells removed and they'll only have the phoretic varroa those are the varroa that will be climbing over the backs of the, the worker bees. And what we can do is to come back in a week and give them an oxalic acid treatment and that will hopefully get rid of any remaining varroa that are on the bees themselves because in that time they won't have capped, sealed any cells and trapping the varroa inside it. So let's make sure the smoke is going. I'll get my hood up and we'll open up this colony. We'll show you some of the frames that we're dealing with. I've got a, a hive in front of me that's got foundation in it. I just need to get some sugar syrup as well because we're going to feed them all the way through to get them to encourage them to draw that comb out. 
and all we should really suffer is a small brood break and with any luck they'll be good to go onto the summer pollination crops and will hopefully produce a crop of honey. So I have to say it's quite chilly today. Um, I'll just give these guys a bit of a smoke. Um, we're expecting temperatures to rise up to around 20 degrees Celsius, something like that. Um, but at the moment it seems particularly chilly. I think it's the breeze that's blowing um, down the hedge line. So we'll give them a bit of smoke. Um, we can probably take this off as well. And this is a, a, a really good example of um, a colony that's just unable to do anything. We've got the soup here. There's a tiny amount, tiny, tiny amount of nectar in there. But other than that, absolutely nothing. And this colony has had exactly the same treatment in terms of location, positioning, as all the other colonies in this um, apiary. They just haven't been able to get going. So um, we'll move this out of the way and actually we'll, we'll remove that uh, we'll remove that super completely. So what we're going to do um, is move this hive complete with its floor off the pallet, put them in front of their normal position and then the hive that I'm sitting on, and these are the techno set hives that we've been um, uh, lucky enough to get hold of recently and again if you want to have a look at these then uh, please do join us on our Patreon page. Uh, oh, and as an aside, uh, this is the Simon the Beekeeper bee suit that I was talking about in a previous video. If you've seen the video where I had the Simon the Beekeeper jacket, um, it's a little bit dirty, sorry about that, but we've been inspecting. Um, but again, a bee suit that's just off the shelf, a fantastic bee suit for the, the price. Uh, take a look at Simon the Beekeeper's website because they're... they're um, remarkably affordable. Anyway, I digress. Uh, so we're going to move these bees off, uh, get them out of the way, and then we can start the transfer. And I'll explain the setup that, that I'm going to use um, before we can get into it. You can probably see there's quite a number of bees here. So there's a, a decent number of bees that hopefully we'll be able to draw out some fresh comb for us and, and again build up their uh, build up their stocks. So I'm just going to lift this off and forward and then we'll position the new hive in its place and then I can break this down and show you this setup that we've got. So these techno set hives are are great. They come with an integral feeder, uh, which is really good. Fits under the roof nicely, so we can move that out of the way. And then we've got frames with foundation. So we'll just take some of these out. And before I actually get into the the process, one of the things that um, you want to try to avoid is losing the colony because uh, they abscond from the hive. And one way that you can do that is by preventing the queen escaping. And the way you do that, um, you, could, you could cage her, but then you've got to come back and, and open up the cage and release her. But what I find really, really useful is putting a uh, queen excluder between the brood box and the floor and then the queen can't get down and through that. So that's the uh, that's the really important bit. If you can stop the queen from absconding then generally you'll find that the bees will be perfectly fine and they'll build up quite quickly again. So we'll make a, a gap in the middle and the whole process is very very straightforward. We take out each frame in turn, have a look for the queen. If we can't see the queen, we shake the bees into this box and then we move on. We move uh, the frames away from the front of the hive 
and then once we get to the end we can shake the bees that are on the side of the brood box onto the top of this brood box and then we can move all of the old equipment away and just fill up the feeder and let them settle down. So that's the next step. I'm just going to move this roof out of the way so I don't trip over that. And let's see if I can kneel down here and then we can get the camera in to show you what we're doing. I have absolutely no need to rush. This isn't a process that you have to rush through. It helps that the bees are, are quite calm. Uh, if you've got an aggressive colony, then um, that in itself would be a challenge. Let's see if we can move this dog rose out of the way. Now the bees are going to get a little bit confused and there will be quite a number of bees in the air. You need to make sure that your entrance is open. So if you've got a national hive with a wooden entrance block, just make sure that the entrance is open because you're not looking to trap the bees uh, inside. And then once we've shaken all the bees off, I'll show you some of the frames that are particularly badly damaged. So can't see the queen on there. So we come across and we're just going to shake the bees yeah. off and into the box there. And then we'll move this frame out of the way. And we can move across. One of the um, uh, nice things about these hives that we're using is that they have slots in them for dividers but it also causes a little bit of an issue in that when I'm trying to shake bees off frames I catch those little slots because I'm not used to the boxes quite yet so um, it does sometimes sound a bit jarring. So let's pop the hive tool down there. You really need to make sure that you get as many bees off the frames as possible. And then move the frame out of the way. And you can see there's lots of bees in the air at the moment and that will continue. So here we've got our queen. So she's just wandering around on this frame. So what I'm going to do is to just take out, now you could cage her, but I'm just going to take out this frame, pick her up and pop her onto this frame. So gently but firmly, so we pop her onto that frame and then we pop that frame down back into our box and then we can continue to shake bees off. And now that the queen's in this box, we shouldn't have any problem with bees not knowing where they need to be. And normally I would put this hive somewhere other than directly in front of the position that we're, we're having the hive, but because I want to demonstrate the process, it's simplest to just show you here. Um, obviously the bees are going to start to congregate on their old hive because they can smell the pheromones. We'll shake the most of them off and then give them a good shake. And we just continue this process all the way through. Good firm shake. Get rid of as many bees as we can. And wherever possible, if you can shake the bees off in the brood box, it makes the job a whole lot easier. You don't get so many bees up in the air when you're shaking them. There we go, another one gone. 
Now obviously they're going to lose all of their food, so it's really important that you feed them and you continue to feed them for as long as is necessary for them to resupply themselves, particularly as we come to the end of the summer period. You can just brush the bees off like this, or in fact you can grab some grass and just brush them off if you wanted to use something. I don't really like the bee brush uh, that you can buy. I find that the bees get caught in the bristles of those, so I don't really like them. And this is so much nicer to use. So it's not a huge colony, but, but it's not a huge colony because they've really struggled with the varroa problem. A bit more grass, brush the breeze off, there we go. Could move that one out of the way. And that's all of the frames taken out. So now we can pop the remaining frames of foundation back in. These are Langstroth hives. Doesn't really matter what hive you're using, it's the same process, exactly the same method. Make sure we get all of the frames pushed across nice and tightly so that we maintain the bee space. And then we just need to get the bees out of this box and then we can move it completely out of the way. And the bees will start to congregate around this box. So I'll just stand up and shake these bees off. some bees off the outside. It's easier with the smooth surface. Let's get a little brush, brush them off. And then we're going to move this out of the way completely. And then we'll just tap the bees off the floor. One of the entrance blocks has come off and move this out of the way. And really, that's all that we have to do. Let's take some of this grass out, help them with their housekeeping. So now we pop the roof back on. And what I, the way I'm going to position this, because it has a a unique little feeder to it. Let's just move the bees off here because we don't want to crush any bees there. So the feeder itself has a flap for fondant and a section for syrup. And it kind of slopes to the front. So I've just turned the feeder around so that the syrup will run down to the front. So we'll just get rid of those bees off there. We'll pop this back on temporarily so we don't fill that up with bees. So now let's just have a look at some of these frames that have got this um, horrible varroa problem and the reason why we've just done what we've done. So we've brought the uh, hive back to the truck so we can talk through what we're seeing. And generally speaking, some of the frames look okay. Uh, some of them are fairly reasonable frames and actually look as if they've got quite a nice brood pattern. But if you look closer, you'll start to see that there's a little bit of sac brood. Some of the cells are not fully uh, capped. And what I'll do is I'll bring the frames closer to the camera so that you can have a look. But whenever you go through your hive and inspect, always look for disease. It's a given, really. And if you see any cells that are not fully capped, then I would suggest those are the ones that you ought to just have a look at. Very often, those cells are just where the bees have been really busy and they haven't yet been able to fully cap the uh, larvae ready for that cell to be completely capped. But other times, you might open up that cell 
and find that there's a genuine problem that you need to address. So let me bring a couple of these frames closer to the camera and I can show you exactly what I mean. So on the face of it, this might look like a reasonable brood pattern. Imagine it covered with bees, you might not see too many gaps. But you can see that there's a cell here that's not been fully capped. There's a cell here that's not been fully capped. And there's one at the top here that's not been fully capped. And there are others as well. So if I unpick these using our uncapping fork, and you could use the uh, edge of a sharp hive tool, or you could use a matchstick or a cocktail stick. So this one you might look at and think that you've got a problem with sac brood. It's got that kind of curled up front kind of slipper effect to it. Then if we uncap this one, this one shows signs of maybe dehydration. So potentially it could be a chalk brood problem, perhaps. And then if we come to this one at the top here again, another situation where we have larvae that again looks as if it might be sac brood. Moving across we have a more serious issue in that the larvae is uh, dying in the cell and is actually turning black and if you use your um, cocktail stick or fork or um, matchstick, you can actually remove the larvae and you can see how that's gone completely liquid inside. Then further down we've got another example. So this problem is starting to affect a lot of the cells. Yet if I move across you'll see that we've got a situation where these cells look fine and we don't have a problem. And this brood is actually healthy. So let's have a look at another frame which is showing even more of a problem. So here's our next frame uh, and the queen has tried to lay lots of eggs so we've got brood and eggs in here but you can see there are multiple multiple cells now that are showing uh, dead and dying larvae and this is a real problem for this colony. They're under pressure and they can't get rid of this problem themselves and that's why we've carried out the shook swarm. As I say you could use a chemical treatment but you can see that there's lots of dead brood here, lots of larvae that have died in the cells and we really needed to rectify this be before the colony collapsed. Finally, just to say that we need to feed them now, don't forget to feed them. They need to replace all of that food that we've taken out and they'll go off and they'll forage and get some pollen, but we need to give them some sugar syrup. At this time of the year, uh, you could quite easily just give them one-to-one -one syrup, so a light syrup. Don't get too hung up on the exact measurements. Uh, in this bucket, I put 10 kilos of sugar and 10 litres of water, uh, warm water. And by the time we'd driven over to this apiary, it was all mixed up. Uh, so don't worry about going for specific weights. It's not that critical. Uh, the Appy Mix syrups are fantastic. Have a look at Modern Beekeeping for those. Uh, they are what we turn to for our autumn feeding and if I'd had some here to, to feed we'd have used that but light sugar syrup made up at home uh, just a, a kilo bag of sugar and a litre of water would be perfectly acceptable but you need to keep that feed going in until they've drawn all of those frames. The queen will start laying actually before the cells have been fully drawn so by the time they're about a third drawn 
she will have laid eggs in them and they will start over again. We may well come back and treat them, if we start seeing some Varroa, we may well come back and treat them with an oxalic acid treatment prior to any of that brood being capped. But I think we've probably taken out the vast majority that's been trapped in these cells. Well, that's it for this week. If you've got any questions, please drop me an email or pop over to my Patreon page to ask the questions there. The comments on these videos this year are disabled because I really just don't have the time to be able to get to answer them all. And I would rather disable those comments than leave you waiting for me to come back and uh, give you a response. Uh, really appreciate you uh, following us. Please do subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and remember to click on that little bell symbol and you'll get a notification each time we upload a new video. Well, that's it for this video. Uh, we'll catch up next time, but for now, thanks for watching.